hit me. From Studio P in Sausalito, the home of the hit, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcasts. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's your host, internationally recognized comedy soundcast soundcaster, Mark... Hello. Hi. Aloha. Shalom. Howdy. I'm your every other weekly host, Mark Hershaw, and this is Epi 266 of Succotash, the comedy soundcast soundcast. Everybody in the right spot? Cool. Last week was episode 265, entitled Summertime and the Clippin' is Easy, hosted by my partner in soundcasting, Tyson Saner. If you missed it, then you missed him. Featuring clips from the Salty Language Soundcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, and Don't Ask Tig. I'm calling this week's installment Soundcasting with a Capital B, and it's what we call a hybrid cast. Part clips, part chat, plus a special visit from our esteemed booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, who you heard in the opening introduction. Back before all this pandemic nonsense started, before we had to lock down, he and I would occasionally belly up to the Studio P wet bar for a segment called Boozin' with Bill. Well, it's been quite a while since Bill has mixed up one of his bizarre libations, plucked from the watering holes of his checkered radio history, but I'm happy to announce that we have a brand new Boozin' with Bill segment. And in a very weak attempt to turn that into a theme this time around, the four soundcast segments I have for you all have titles that begin with B, like Bill's name. We have Bill Burr's Monday Morning Podcast, The Bitch Bible, Breaking Bread with Tom Papa, and Brittle Star's Really Great Podcast. And this episode is sponsored by Breakaway Trousers from Henderson's Pants. See? Another B. Finally, and yes, there is more in this supersized episode, we're going to chat with friend of Succotash and longtime soundcaster, Chris Mancini, whose name does not start with a B, to have him talk about his latest Kickstarter campaign that's coming down to the wire. It's for volume two of his graphic novel, Rise of the Kung Fu Masters. I caught up with Chris via Zoom this past week to do a little refresh on his trio of soundcasts and to find out more about Rise of the Kung Fu Masters 2. So, uh, first of all, uh, Chris is a, a past guest on the show. I'd like to think of you as a friend of the Succotash family. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, you may know him from Comedy Film Nerds, a uh, long-running uh, podcast that uh, he had with Graham Elwood, their attendant book, comedy film nerds as well. Um, but he currently has three, that's right, three podcasts all running at the same time, which is amazing, right? There's uh, What Are You Watching? Yep, that's uh, the, that my interview one. Mm -hmm. uh, the Quiet Journeys of uh, Professor Atwood. Yeah, that one's a really fun one. I tried to create something that was a hybrid of nothing that was kind of out there before. I wanted to create like a comedy storytelling science adventure relaxation sleep aid podcast <laughs> so i put all those things together about a scientist who goes on um travels through um everywhere from under the sea to exotic places to through time but at the same time it kind of uh relaxes you takes the temperature down makes you smile and laugh a little bit and it can also help you sleep because we put a nice uh um underneath my narration there's a, a nice bed of sound and sound effects and ambient noises to kind of just help you chill and relax and it's been really fun and rewarding and people have been saying it's been helping them so uh it's definitely something i wanted to do I have yet to make it all the way through a single episode. Yeah, that's a great compliment, actually. <laughs> I, have, I have yours is one of three podcasts that uh, I use to uh, to go to sleep to, and it uh, it does its job. I literally, I, literally <laughs> I, I sometimes have listened to one episode three times, and I try to pick it up from where I last can consciously remember hearing it. And <laughs> now I've gotten so used to the sound of the good professor, uh, and his, uh, his gentle tones that, uh, I just go right out again. Oh, that's great. Good. <laughs> Glad it's helping. 
<laughs> and then there's Conversations from the Abyss, which is a bit weirder than the other two. Yeah, it's uh, basically it's stories to help you sleep and stories to keep you awake. And that's the one that'll uh, uh, keep you awake. It's a Twilight Zone style radio play anthology where it's creepy conversations uh, between two living things, uh, possibly. Sometimes they may be other <laughs> things. Uh, but the, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create like a Black Mirror, Twilight Zone style show, but also have it in the podcast space where it really sounds like you're overhearing a conversation that you shouldn't be hearing. Yes. So there's no music in uh, their sound effects to make it a little bit more realistic. But I remember the sound designers asked me, what about music? And I'm like, um, no, because you wouldn't hear those in an actual conversation. So it's I, I try to ground it as all the crazy things that happen. I try to ground it as much as possible. So it adds another level of uncomfortableness <laughs> to uh, eavesdropping on a um, horribly terrifying conversation yeah so if you're falling asleep to conversations from the abyss something is wrong with you. yes <laughs> you're using them in the opposite ways <laughs> <laughs> but uh, aside from uh, from the audio and visual mediums you've been involved with um you've been doing um graphic novels yes and uh, oh shoot let me turn my email off so it doesn't mm -hmm. noise so many things to remember i know a lot a lot of on and off switches so you've been uh, uh, you've been in the graphic novel field, and you start out with Long Ago and Far Away. Yes, uh, Long Ago and Far Away is my first graphic novel um, that came out um, last year. Or may God, all the time is like uh, no, it was probably the year before. And literally, time has no meaning anymore, as you know. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, it was a. Uh, a premise of like, I was thinking, you know, I love the Narnia kids growing up, uh, the Narnia books and the the kids and in, uh, in the stories. And I thought, well, what would happen if those kids went into a fantasy uh, land, came back? And what would happen to the one kid who grew up? He's 30 now. He's uh, a jerk and he has to go back into that world again as an adult. <laughs> so that's the premise for uh, Long Ago and Far Away. We kickstarted that successfully. Now it's out on Comixology through Starburns Press, who is also putting it in development as a... Uh, uh, as it uh, put in development as a TV show. So we'll see what happens there. And then the new one that is uh, being kickstarted right now is Rise of the Kung Fu Dragon Master, which is another uh, comedy slash action where uh, there's definitely a little bit of a, uh, a feel of like 80s buddy comedy movies that I grew mm. up with. I, I was kind of unconscious about it until a couple of people pointed it out. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, you're right. It, it is kind of in there because that's kind of what I, the stories I grew up with. And it's uh, about Rick, a small time crook in L.A. who accidentally gets the power of the dragon and gets uh, swept up in a mystical battle between good and evil that's fought since the days of ancient China. And he is ill equipped to deal with any of it. <laughs> and uh, volume two, we're kickstarting right now. Volume one is uh, out at the White Cat uh, Entertainment Store and we're working on getting that picked up uh, to go uh, with a broad release. But it, I don't want to leave anybody out in the cold. If you missed volume one, uh, the Kickstarter actually has packages where you get volume one and volume two together, uh, digital or hard copy, or you could also get volume one in the uh, White Cat Entertainment Store. So, but that goes until September 5th. So we're over halfway there, but, you know, every little bit helps. Uh, and a lot of people yeah. kind of wait to the last minute. I'm like, don't, you know, the other thing you get to do is by pledging early is help the creator's anxiety. So <laughs> that also is a great thing to do. I'm like, oh, they, I, I, every $30 gives them a little more peace of mind as they get towards that goal. <laughs> yeah. So the date again, it, that uh, campaign ends is September 5th. Yes. And let's see, we'll be, uh, as of the time that we'll start, start dropping this episode you'll have about three weeks to uh to get that in and it's funny with these <laughs> with different things people uh try and get online right so if you're on, on ebay trying to bid on something you wait to the last minute right, right? So you, <laughs> you don't want someone to overbid you yeah this is the opposite right this is the opposite mm -hmm. um now are there stretch goals that have been met are there stretch goals yet to come for this the, particular the one there are stretch goals yet to come and we'll probably release those about two weeks before the campaign ends. And uh, 
uh, to also help us get there. And there's some really fun things. The The book will get larger and more fun. And I think we've got uh, some bookmarks and some cool other uh, rewards. There'll be like a white cat entertainment pack where you'll get like a white cat entertainment magnet and some stickers for the shows. Like, like all these will be kind of cool add-ons that you'll get with, uh, with the pledge. But uh, the other thing that's interesting now is everything gets a little more sophisticated. All the algorithms are uh, a lot of front loaded. So the quicker you could get to your goal, like the more it mm. kind of snowballs, like if you have a slow and steady way to get to your goal, which is normally what we do with Kickstarters, turns out that's not the best thing. <laughs> You actually have to, everything is no faster, quicker, better, more. Yeah. <laughs> so, now it's patterned after motion picture box office. Get that first weekend. Yeah. In. Yeah. And which is also an obsolete model now. <laughs> yes. So, yes. So it, it's, it's frustrating, but it's also, it is the way it is. So we encourage people to kind of um, pledge as soon as they can, because it, it helps stay in the rankings and the um, it helps get to the goal faster and also kind of helps stay in the feeds a little bit more. So, so that's one e of the Excellent. So we'll put a, a direct link to the Kickstarter up on our blog piece that goes with this episode, but just to let people know what's the, the best way for them to, to get to the, the campaign page. Um, you could just go to whitecatentertainment.com and then click through there. Or if you go to kickstarter.com and type in Rise of the Kung Fu Dragon Master Volume 2, which will clearly take more time, but you could do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds great. Uh, Chris, anything else uh, folks need to know about this exciting new book? Um, it's just been kind of been like a love letter to um, all the action and comedy movies I kind of grew up with. And A Big Tr Trouble in Little China was one of them, the Jackie Chan movies and even like stuff like the Spielberg movies and like the Goonies, where it was that kind of sense of wonder and people getting um, way over their head in fantastical <laughs> situations. And uh, um, I did make sure, though, because this means a lot to me, even with comedy and comic books, that there's some heartfelt character moments in there, too. Mm -hmm. Like, what are these characters learning? What's the arc that they're going through like a like a screenplay? So. There are moments there too, like even though the um, um, the lead is, you know, kind of a jerk at the beginning, um, things kind of warm up and he learns a little bit more. And and uh, especially with a book about martial arts and mm -hmm. and you know Eastern versus versus Western philosophies, I always wanted to put a little extra in there about we have such anger in the the uh, our, our um, Western <laughs> cultures, like we do. How do you reconcile that with like a um, a Zen and meditation and uh, at peace <laughs> philosophies, but also no. you know you're fighting a giant mystical battle too. So there there's a lot mm. of kind of fun um, call outs to things like that, and also our toxic masculinity <laughs> and uh, uh, our solving everything with fists kind of thing. That's great. That as well. That's great. Um, before I let you go, there were a couple of things uh, in the spirit of uh, what are you watching. And I just want to see whether you've seen them yet, because I just watched them on uh, Netflix. Sure. Uh, one was Blood Red Sky. I have, indeed. Okay. <laughs> did you enjoy it? I did. And what I really liked about it is, was that movie was as advertised. All right. Yes. A vampire fighting hijackers on a plane. Yes. You know, there was no middle ground. There was no, no confusion as to what it was supposed no. to be. It was, it was what it was violent, bloody and ridiculous. I'm like, okay, well, this is, you know, I, I you pays your money and you gets, you takes your I, chance. And I, that worked out beautifully. <laughs> I love some of the, the twists of the trope, like the one guy who's one of the terrorists who no qualms whatsoever instantaneously, as soon as he sees what's happening, we're fighting a vampire. Yes. <laughs> As if vampires have always existed and everyone yep. knows about it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm going to well, sharpen this stick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love too, like the whole premise of like, she's going to New York to get cured. Like only New York has the cure to vampirism. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but if she doesn't get there right away, she starts to turn. And that's, of course, what what happened. But, exactly. Uh, um, and the, the other one was a is a French movie called uh, How I Became a Superhero. I have not seen that yet, but it sounds intriguing. It is because it's not like a Marvel or DC movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet it is about people with superpowers, but it's uh, it's set in France. It's in French and uh, it has a French sensibility to the whole thing. It's kind of oh. funny. Um, is it funny it actually, too? Is it like a action it comedy kind of thing? It is. There's a, there's a lot of comedy to it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, and there's an interesting backstory to the, to the main character who's a cop. 
And uh, anyway, I think you'll probably enjoy it given oh, the, check it out. The, the breadth of that sort of genre that you enjoy. So. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely check it out. So there, there's a little mini plug for mm -hmm. what, are you, what are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. One of the reasons I do the show too, like, uh, you know, I, I get to learn about things that I may have missed is because uh, every guest comes on and says, oh, I'm probably going to talk about the same thing as your last guest. And very rarely people do. It's always people yeah. are all watching different things. And then I get to uh, check things out later, like, uh, like, somebody will like you just mentioned something and then i'll, I'll um, a couple episodes later i'll oh i just checked out this thing that you know mark recommended yeah. now let's talk about that cool all right chris i'm gonna let you go thank you so much for jumping on hope we can uh, help with the the famed succotash bump uh to get you a few more folks for the for the book and like i said we'll have a, a link directly to the kickstarter site on our blog site Oh, yeah, that's trademarked, the famed Succotash bump. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. <laughs> Chris Mancini, everybody. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon, Chris. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Take care. This portion of Succotash is brought to you by Henderson's Breakaway Trousers. For the first time available to the public, Henderson's Breakaway Trousers are the ideal solution for you, whether you are a man suffering from weak bladder syndrome or premature ejaculation. How many times have you been running late for that important business meeting only to find that your bratty bladder doesn't care about snaps, buttons, zippers, and belts? And who hasn't been on that date of a lifetime with that hottie that everyone wants to bang? You'd like to make a good showing, but gosh darn it, those pesky spermatozoa want out, and they want out now. Friends, when you're sporting a pair of Henderson's breakaway trousers, you've got the confidence to know that you'll be down to nothing in no time at all. And before you can say, Jack Robinson, it's bombs away and you're good to go. Originally designed for the military, the theater, and penitentiary, penitentiary, pe jails, Henderson's breakaway trousers are available online and wherever fine pants are sold. Available soon in women's styles too. That's Henderson Breakaway Trousers. And now back to more of Succotash. Henderson's Breakaway Trousers. Man, I wish I had a pair on right now. I really could use them. For the first clip of this show, we're going to revisit Bill Burr's Monday Morning Podcast. We featured Bill's show before. I've reviewed it for This Week in Comedy Podcasts over on Vulture.com. And with good reason. It's always entertaining. He's got the kind of talent it takes to fill an hour of podcast time all by himself and keep it fresh and funny. Who else is doing that today? Greg Proops, uh, Alonzo Bowden, Greg Fitzsimmons come to mind. But there's not a whole lot of other comedy soundcasters who can do it without sidekicks, sketches, interviews, or other elements to carry them through. This clip is actually from the show last Thursday, August 12th, and he rambles around the topics of TikTok and Boston comics. All right. So last night I was, uh, I was going to bed and my wife was watching all these TikTok videos, which I really like. I really like TikTok, but for the life of me, I just can't figure out, you know, oh no, I downloaded the app and then just wanted all of this information. Like it used to be, if you didn't have TikTok, they would still play the video. Now the video plays and it's on mute, you know? So at that point, it's just like, all right, you know what? I'll just watch it on my wife's phone. I'm not, I think enough people got my information out there. I don't need to be signing up for your crap. Although TikTok is perfect as far as like, you know, videos that I should short. They're funny. A lot of funny fucking videos out there. I saw somebody like dressed up like Bigfoot dancing around. Who would think something as simple as that? Acting out a song would be funny. I just don't like those uh, those cooking videos. There's so many amateur cooks out there that have no idea what the fuck they're doing. And their thing is like, they make Emeril Lugasi look like understated. Because I remember when that guy first came out, I was like, this guy is out of his fucking mind. Because he was taking like all of these standard like dishes that you knew and where everybody else would stop, he would keep adding shit for like another 10 minutes. Bam! We're going to kick it up another notch, right? He'd add extra chocolate chips or something. Remember, he was making like those fucking uh, Hello Dolly bars. 
um, what do we call them? Or a coconut dream bar, as they were called at the bakery uh, that I went into one time. And he added a whole other extra layer of chocolate chip. At this point, they make him look like he cooks in a bland way. I saw this thing the other fucking day. This guy made a, a uh, I don't know what the fuck he was making, but it was just like, just stop. Stop. That whole fucking having a, a savory thing that you add some sugary shit to, and then they go back to the salt and then they're always jizzing like some balsamic vinaigrette. And they always stick a pickle on there, some mayonnaise. You know, my wife was watching one. This woman was just like, you know, this is what I do. You know, she has like the keto thing. So anything that you have that isn't bread, she just turns it into bread. Like a pepper or a pickle or a kumquat. She just uses that for bread. And after a while, it's just like, you're just making the same dish over and over again. We had this, you guys, and it was so delicious. Try it out and tell me if you like it. Why am I shitting on her? She's got a dream. I'm sorry. And then she watches those ones where it's just the sound of sizzling and cutting and all of that. And I swear to God, it's like nails going down a fucking chalkboard. Um, Whatever. We were watching that thing last night. By the way, my wife last night might have been the funniest person there. Just was just shitting on everybody in a funny way. She goes, hey, Bill, could you have booked any more middle-aged white guys on this show? (laughs) And it was just like, this is what the comedy scene was. It was a fucking sausage fest. It was, and it was all white guys and like Patrice until Dwayne Perkins came along. It was Carl Yard, I think. Um... Who else was up here? There wasn't a lot. It was just a, it was just a bunch of white guys going, dude, what the fuck's with the snow? It's fucking snowing every other fucking day up here. Jesus Christ, my balls are fucking turning blue. That's all it was. That's all Boston comedy was, was a bunch of fucking white guys. So we represented it. I kept it real. It was all white guys. There was not one ounce of diversity on the show. Um... Anyway, that's the podcast. I got to go for my little old man walk. Go Red Sox. The New England Patriots have their uh, first preseason game tonight. Uh, imagine that, uh, that quarterback. I don't even know his name yet. The kid from Alabama is going to get a couple of snaps. We'll see how he looks. You know? Who knows? Did Bill Belichick pull it off again? Patriots QB. Uh Jared Stidham is who we got. And, of course, we got Cam Newton, too. Uh, but we'll see what's going on here. No disrespect to Cam Newton. I mean, Jesus Christ. Bill Burr's show is all part of the All Comedy Network, a collection of comedy-based shows that Bill actually is one of the founders of. And, of course, you can find the Monday Morning Podcast in all of the usual downloady places like Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, which is more streamy than downloady, really, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and more. Next up is a clip from a Canadian-based soundcast, Brittle Star's Really Great Podcast. Brittle Star is the well-known alias of Stuart Reynolds from Ontario, and he has almost 20 million followers on YouTube. I love his humor. It's very dry, very deadpan, and very smart. From the Canada Last Week episode from July 30th, I've clipped his report on the rental car situation on Cape Breton, a small island community in Canada. Helping him out with the report is unrelated expert... That's in capital letters. And one of the stars of TV's Will and Grace, Eric McCormick. Car trouble in Cape Breton. As part of an upcoming marketing campaign, six social media influencers, whatever they are, were to be given the use of rental cars to explore the island and take in its culinary and cultural delights. However, the plan had to be revised at the last minute as there were not enough rental cars in the area to accommodate. The social media celebrities will now be driven around the island by tourism staffers and other residents. Many are worried that the rental car shortage will have a bigger impact than simply on the six influencers with thousands of followers they document every facet of their lives for, and word may get out and damage the tourist trade in Cape Breton. Here to comment on the crisis in Cape Breton is the star of stage and screen, singer and unrelated expert, 
Eric McCormack. Thank you for joining us, Eric. Well, thanks for having me. I'll start off first, actually, with a question for you, if I could. Um, and I'm hoping you can clarify this for us. What exactly is a rental car? Um, well, clearly, it's not a car you own. Um, it's mm -hmm. it's something that, like, for instance, I own uh, several, several cars, and um, some of them very expensive. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, if I wanted to drive one of those cars on Cape Breton, which I think uh is an island or something um mm -hmm. it would be hard because of the water uh between the, uh, the country and the islands so one would uh, uh, ostensibly borrow a car but pay someone uh, for it excellent i appreciate that uh, humble brag of an answer uh as the social media influencers will now be driven around by local residents of Cape Breton, do you feel that's giving the social media stars a better idea of the area or simply making them panicky that they won't be able to just leave when they want? Well, uh, you know, it's both uh, a relief uh, and unnerving uh, because I don't, I don't generally drive my own uh, cars if I can help it. So it's, it's nice that, uh, that others, We'll do it, um, but at the same time, uh, if what what do they know about it? What do, what do people living on a small, I guess it's a Canadian island? What do they know about driving? Am I putting myself at risk? And I and I think that's mm -hmm. a, a concern for for all of us that uh, that report to social media. And uh, I, I certainly want to say nice things, but I'm 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 a little nervous about mm -hmm. it, you know. So you're concerned about the residents' livery skills, essentially. Uh, and can they and can they drive? Uh, in a related story on this topic uh, by the CBC, they attempted to contact several car rental companies in Nova Scotia, but received no response from any of them. Is this whole thing just a ploy to get good-looking people stuck in Cape Breton forever and start a new, better-looking society down east? Well, that's part of what's so unnerving uh is is that it does seem i mean first of all i'm, I'm not shocked that there there were no responses it's very hard to get uh, car rental places on on the line i i imagine um but i look if i get stuck on cape breton i will i'll use the skills that i have learned um as an actor uh, in in action films, um, I haven't done a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I've seen some, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. I, I think what you you've simply just got to use your ingenuity, kind of MacGyver your way mm -hmm. back to the mainland. Uh, because I'll, you know, I'm certainly willing to reproduce to a certain degree if it's going to help um, how people look and 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 live in in cape Breton, but i can't live there forever i can't become some kind of a king or a god mr reynolds as brittle star has a lot of content scattered across the web so next time you're looking to do a deep dive down the internet rabbit hole look him up so i am very excited to be featuring a return to our boozing with bill segment I only wish that I could have been with him for this one, but Bill has been in quarantine since COVID began, I think. But he's been getting healthy and has found a diet that really works for him, smoothies. Boozing with Bill. Hello, friends. Bill Haywatt here. And you know, you haven't heard a lot from me in Boozing with Bill because... Well, I've been on the straight and narrow. I've been living the healthy lifestyle during this pandemic because, hey, no Delta COVID variant for me, I'll tell you. And that's why I've had all of my food delivered so I don't have to go out amongst you in public. And that's, I've been using something called Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest at dailyharvest.com. And they say, we're here to help you stock up your home with clean, delicious food built on real fruits and vegetables. And we know how busy you are, so our food is crazy fast, ready, and delivered right to your door, which uh, I witnessed because they delivered it to me. And what I've been drinking a lot of is smoothies. I think smoothies are very health healthy. And I have a smoothie here that's called banana, spinach, cacao, cashew, Chorel cholera, chor chlorella, chlorella, and organic peppermint. And so here I have it here. Oh, you can hear the container. I'm going to open the container 
and um, you know, something like this. It's got all this good stuff in it, and then I put it inside the blender. And in the blender, it's, it says here, now fill to the top with your preferred liquid. Any liquid works, but we'd go with an option like almond or oat milk. And I say, fuck that. I'm gonna go with my favorite beverage, which is a shot of Southern Comfort. Oops, here we go. And a shot of my bourbon du jour, which I like to call Elijah Craig, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Small Batch Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. So I'm gonna get another shot of that. So we've got the delicious, healthy, har daily harvest, uh, uh, oops, sorry, the daily harvest um, a smoothie, and then a little bit of the Elijah Craig, and a little bit of the Southern Comfort, and then you gotta fill it up so that the blender knows exactly what it's going to do. So we're gonna put it, some milk in there. We're gonna fill it up with milk. And there it is. Okay, so now we've got to uh, affix the, uh, the thing on the blender so it won't get all over you, you know, that would be very, very bad. Now we tighten it up and let's get it into the blender, not just any blender, the Juicy On blender. Sounds French, so it's gotta be good. Now let's get that thing locked in tight. Locked in tight, I said, let's get this motherfucker locked in tight. God, oh, sorry, I get carried away here with uh, health. All right, let's go. All right, now let's get it going now. Yeah. You gotta blend it so it gets all the goodness in there from that Elijah Craig in the Southern Comfort. Okay, that's about enough. Let's take it out of the blender and we'll take the lid off Get that lid off, there we go. And it looks all green and healthy. If it's green, it's gotta be good, you know, cause these are green days. Then you get a little straw. Mmm, mmm. That native flavoring puts it right over the top. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, Daily Harvest from dailyharvest.com and get that delicious banana, spinach, cacao, cashew, cholera, and pam pe pe peppermint smoothie and top it off with a little Elijah Craig and a little Southern Comfort, and you are ready to go uh, be healthy and uh, get into, go down to uh, the gym and, and work it all out. This is Bill Haywatt with another episode of Boozin' with Bill. It's so great to hear Bill sounding so healthy, and I'm glad he's taking his own health regimen to heart. Hopefully, we will be back in Studio P together again soon. Our next clip comes from a soundcast that started out as a blog back in 2012. The Bitch Bible was created by its host, Jackie Schimmel. The show description touts it as being, quote, a podcast that dares to say what many are thinking, but only a bitch would say. Expect unfiltered and unapologetic discussions about sex, millennial struggles, pop culture, social faux pas, and hopefully, an insightful takeaway. Nothing is off limits, unquote. In this clip, which is from her recent episode unabashedly entitled The Worst Episode Ever, Jackie ranges from talking about Christmas trees to Froyo. If you're not up to speed, I bought my dead mom's childhood home. Now, my grandmother, back in the day, they were the first owners of this home. They used to plant their Christmas trees. My mother converted to Judaism. We don't know why. Uh, it was not by any outside pressure. She wanted to be a part of the community. She wanted to go on birthright. Who fucking knows? But she converted and she grew up Christian. So her family planted all of their Christmas trees in the front yard. Now that was 85,000 years ago. You can imagine that these Christmas trees are literally over a hundred feet tall. Okay. And you know, you're thinking, oh, that's so cute. You have your mom's Christmas trees. The irony is not lost on me because my mother would poltergeist me from the grave if I got a Christmas tree. I don't know why she was born Christian, but she was very, our whole lives, so anti-Christmas tree. She's like, it's confusing. We're Jewish. I'm like, um, your name is Christy. You're not going to pull that wool over my eyes with that straight goyim hair. I don't think so, bitch. Like, no, please. You are one 
fucking Costco pinwheel away from an Easter egg hunt. Like, don't play, you know, Rachel Rosenberg on me, sweet cheeks. So we had this arsonist. What is it called? I don't know. The person that looks at the fucking trees, okay? He looks at the trees. He said, this one has been rotten for years. It's a ticking time bomb. If this timbers, you're going to die in this house. And I'm like, "Mm." the irony that I might be impaled and crushed to death by a, my mother's Christmas tree. I mean, Nancy Myers, get a bucket and a mop for that wet ass pussy plot line. Write it down, put it in the holiday too. So now we have to get the fucking Christmas trees extracted from the ground so that we don't die. Live every day like it's your last because it might be. It might be for me. Do we think that Michael Buble did a, like put a hex on me. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go. I oh, don't even get, I'll say it once. I'll say it twice. I'll say it 18,000 times. Michael Buble is a terrorist, allegedly moving right along. I just hate him. I hate his face. I hate his voice. I hate his hair. I hate his shoulders. I, I fucking hate him. He looks like Zach Greenberg, uh, the Kate Hudson's brother in Bride Wars got hit by a fucking bus and had some chromosomal disorder. That's what I think of when I think of Michael Bublé. Love you. Mean it. Come on the podcast. <laughs> Speaking of Michael Bublé, let's talk about frozen yogurt. I swear to God, I did not have frozen yogurt for about 14 years until Demi Lovato uh, villainized frozen yogurt. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give him a pity fuck. I've had frozen yogurt every day for the past two weeks. It's delightful. I sit in my car. I get that tart shit. Sometimes I put fruity pebbles on it. If you know, you know, give it a go. There is a woman standing in front of me. Talk about circling the fucking drain. Okay. You would have thought that she was headed to fucking death row to the electric chair. And this was the last frozen yogurt she was ever going to get in her entire life. She was wearing a printed legging. I hate a workout pant with a motif, like, like, um, uh, like pina coladas or dolphins or like fucking fruit. Disgusting. Like go with a solid or a stripe or like a, a muted print. Could we just commit to solid leggings? Let's not like, we don't need any razzle dazzle on your thunder thighs. You know what I'm saying? Like be discreet, be cool. Don't be all uncool. This bitch, I wrote it down. I was beyond my eye twitching from just pure exhaustion and just general disdain for the outside world, people, places, and things. This woman pilfering over her fucking afternoon froyo toppings. I wanted to get in my car and reverse over her body with the fucking smoothie motif leggings. Her her leggings had like it looked, it looked like maybe margaritas. And I was like, no, I hate you. I hate everything about you. Listen to what this terrorist ordered at a Froyo shop. Okay. She got creme brulee and cotton candy swirled together, frozen yogurt, creme brulee and cotton candy. Okay. It gets worse. And then she topped it off with salted pretzel crumbs creme brulee, cotton candy, and salted pretzel toppings. This woman belongs in prison. Jackie Schimmel definitely has a fun take on life and stuff. And you will welcome the fact that she says she's soon to be your, quote, bitchy and super neurotic best friend. (laughs) That's comforting. There's a very funny comedian named Tom Papa. He's been performing for years, mostly on the East Coast, and he's hosted a few TV shows. His podcast, Breaking Bread with Tom Papa, is kind of like hanging out with Tom and his guests after a comedy show. He literally breaks bread, as in having a meal with his friends, and we get to join them. We don't get any food, but we get to listen in. He recently invited the Sklar brothers, Randy and Jason, to sit down and chew the figurative and literal fat. In our clip, the guys are talking about their kids turning into teens. So I dropped my 16-year-old daughter off at camp, and like, 
we went on a trip to Lake Tahoe beforehand. I tried to schedule all this so that like we could do it all, have like yeah. a family trip. And then since we were up there, I was dropping her in Northern California and we got over there. And yeah. the younger one is like, why do we have to drive all the way over here? And the older one is like, I just wanted to be at home so I could see my friends. Like, I'm glad <laughs> yeah. you got to have your trip. I'm like, this was for all of us. Uh, so we, I drop her off and, and yeah. they're wonderful. I joke that yeah. I love them both. They're wonderful, awesome kids. And, and I drop her off and like, of course, because it's COVID, there wasn't camp last year. Mm -hmm. The last time I dropped her off was two years ago, and that was our first time ever at this camp. So there isn't right. like a, I was like, I think I drive in here, and yeah. there's like a sign that's like exit only, and I'm like, I think it's the way I'm supposed to go. <laughs> The wrong, the worst ever. position so ever to be in. A, a car dad, full of people. To a be car like, full of I think three it's women, this? three women, two young women, yeah. and my wife. Like to 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 take a flyer on something that isn't the right thing. You know, like <laughs> totally. You know, the dad fucking. You know, you're like going into quicksand that you will never get out of. <laughs> just straight, exactly. I'll just. You got to lean into it. At right. That moment, so I though. park it, and it's I'm like, like, you've driven a car into the lake, and you're watching the water go <laughs> yeah. up in the car, and you can't unlock it. And I'm like, Daddy did this bubble and i was like so i parked the car and i get her huge duffel bag out yeah. and her sleeping bag and the pillow and we're carrying it. we're like where do we drop the stuff off because it was dropped off up here last time and they're like oh no you guys got to go down there just walk down that path and meanwhile it's like straight down it's really go down this path and i go to the thing and you know it's hot and i've got all this stuff and i literally this is how nicely i asked the person sitting at the tent checking people and i was like where do I drop this off? And my six-year-old daughter was like, please do not make a scene. I was like, <laughs> I am just trying to drop your thing off. I have no idea what I'm doing don't wrong here. Like, don't make a scene. I'm like, what do you want to do? A scene like, would have been like, bitch, where do I put this? Yeah. Where do we drop this shit? I'm going to drop seven N-bombs and walk like, out of this. Yeah. That's, like, a scene. that's a scene. You don't know. I don't think you understand what a scene, scene is because yeah. dad's held Do you it want together. me to make a scene? Because yeah. I can make a scene. We're performers. We can drop this yeah. thing. And so it just was like, there yeah. are moments where it's like intense, that stuff. And totally, then, and then just intensely cool. They're wonderful adults who are the greatest young yeah. adults. Doesn't who that just... feel like it's a great connecting point? I, I felt like older. We talked about this in our stand up too. Like we yeah. couldn't wait for our kids to be older to be able to sort yeah. of. No, I did. I always said like I can't wait for them to be able to sit in a diner with me. Right. right. When like the baby thing was like cute and all, but I was like, I want to sit. It's work. Have an omelet and talk. Right, that's right. <laughs> right. That and do your kids do your yeah. kids love that you do what you do? Do they understand that, you know, they understand yeah. it obviously. It but... took a long time though. Right. Like it yeah. it took like a long time for them to realize because they're not they don't really want to know too much. Right. Like even like early teens are like like if I could if I could get them to meet someone, like I did the Tonight Show and they met Miley Cyrus mm. and they were like all right, he's cool like this that. This is cool. And right. then I'd go do Conan, and they didn't know the lead guest. They'd be like, "No, nah, we're gonna stay home." And it was like they just said <laughs> like, no. What? It was like I was their Uber insane. driver to Conan. Right. I wasn't right. performing right. on Conan. <laughs> I was just driving them to yeah, meet people. Right. Exactly. But now, I think now, like they see that we've kind of carved out this odd life. Yeah. Like we're not a dad that has like a straight job. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. it's kind of funny. And, yeah. and uh, you know, if they tag you, they get more followers. So like, <laughs> or that, they that see part of out, it, they see someone out who like is a stranger who's like, Oh, I yeah. saw you and yes, I love yes, your yes. thing. Whatever. Totally. Like, then they, 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 they take note of that. They're yeah. like, yeah, maybe well, he, maybe he does cool. have some value. Yeah. Maybe he's, maybe, yeah, maybe he's got something. Yeah. But, uh, so, and yours? So my son is now 12 and a half, almost 13. Okay. And he's now at the age where he, he's gotten super into skateboarding nice. in the last year. And so he is at the age now where we will drop him at a skate park oh, with like yeah. three or four of his friends at like 11 in the morning. And he'll be like, get me at seven tonight. Wow. And he'll just skate. Oh, good for him. And I'm like, I kind of like that. kind of so awesome. great. Yeah. It's outside. It's passion not, for yeah. something. Also on that particular episode, in addition to the scars, Tom has a quick bite with author Andrew Heaton. You can be breaking bread with Tom Papa at distribution points across the world wide web. A couple of episodes ago, we announced the rebranding of our call in line due to the fact no one seemed to be interested in calling into it. So now you can reach us at the Succotash and Runaway Truck Ramp hotline in order to either talk about comedy soundcasts or give listeners a status update on one of America's runaway truck ramps. I see we have a call on the hotline now. 
Let's give a listen. Hi, I'm uh, up here on the Presidential Highway, U.S. Route 2 through northern New Hampshire, uh, just a little bit west of Mo- Moose Brook State Park. And the runaway truck ramp uh, is open and available, but looks overgrown and like no one has used it or tested it in quite some time. So uh, maybe you could dispatch a landscaping unit and uh, make sure it's uh, up to uh, up to spec. All right, I'll report uh, back as necessary. Thank you, Colin. Although I didn't identify himself, I believe I recognize the voice of our caller from last week, Phil Lairness of the Chill Pack Hollywood Hour and the Los Angeles Breakfast Club on the air. Uh, if you'd like to give the hotline a jingle, the number is always 1-818-921-7212. Last but not least, actually last but least, it's Tweet Sack time. Here are some of the fine folks who've mentioned or dropped at Succotash Show into their socials in the past week or so, and we thank you. The Jock Doc Podcast, Monster Party. Hey, congratulations on hitting episode 200, fellas. That's Monster Party Podcast. Don't miss it. Corey Epps, I Shake My Head, Stunami, Michelle O'Murth, Misfit Scully, Salty Language Pod, Hunter Block, Guitar Sun Cat, Becca James, The Talking Dicks, Sensibly Cynical, The Irish on Fire, Let's Chat Podcast, Yoshi140, Comic Dwarves, and Chattering Classes. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Well, yeah, you should do that. We're at Succotash Show on Twitter and Instagram. But that was not Bill Haywatt, and that is not our jingle. I'm not sure where these are coming from lately. Thanks for jumping into the Succotash for this extra long episode. Grab us next week for Epi 267 with co-host Tyson Saner. And try to wisely use whatever summer days you might still have off coming up. Remember to mask, vax, and be smart around people, people. And if anyone asks if you've heard anything good lately, won't you please pass the Succotash? You've been listening to Succotash, the comedy soundcast soundcast with your host, Mark Hershaw. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Rate us and review us at Apple and Google Podcasts. Find us on the web at SuccotashShow.com. On Spotify. On Stitcher. On iHeartRadio. On YouTube. On SoundCloud. And wherever fine soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Suckatash Show. Like us on Facebook. Email us at marc at succotashshow.com or call into the Succotash Skype line at our toll call number 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash you slash Succotash. Succotash is produced and engineered by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Saner. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Succotash is executive produced by Mark Hershon. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Succotash goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.